Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here, explaining why the new moon isn't the full moon. Now, we've gotten this question a few times. I think there's a channel or somebody out there who's trying to convince the world or anybody that will listen that the new moon is actually a full moon. In other words, when you see that big old fat moon in the sky, they're claiming that that's actually the new moon, which is the start of our months. But in this video, what we're going to do is look in the book of Enoch, first Enoch, and we're going to be glancing at three different translations of first Enoch as we get a clear explanation on whether the new moon is full or whether the new moon is more closer to the invisible. So we're down here in the book of the revolutions of the luminaries of heaven which is a sub book inside of the greater work known as first Enoch this book is all about the luminaries and how our father's sacred timepiece works we learned over in Genesis chapter 1 that the Sun the moon and the stars are supposed to represent his timepiece well in first Enoch we find out how all of that is supposed to work now before we get started I need to make it clear that we're not talking about the information coming from the book of remembrance with respect to the calendar um, those authors in the early 21st century no doubt used the Urim and the Thummim in order to interview Enoch directly and apparently they got some information about the calendar which they wrote in their book called the book of remembrance the problem is what they received by way of the Urim and the Thummim in about 2010 contradicts what Enoch wrote in his book about 6,000 years earlier. Again, this is the first book ever written on the planet. And we're going to jump down to chapter 72 from the Lawrence translation. That is, uh, it'll be chapter 73 from the other translations. And we may touch on those to get more clarity as we focus in on what the new moon actually looks like is it big and fat or is it small and skinny so let's start here at verse 1 it says after this law I beheld another law of an inferior luminary the name of which is the moon and the orb of which is as the orb of heaven its chariot which it secretly ascends the wind blows and light is given to it by measure we are going to cover the entire chapter, but many of these verses we cover in another video. Um, so I'm not going to go into great detail on some of these verses like what you see here. Check out that other video. We actually spent a lot of time explaining um, these verses scientifically, no doubt, with references from several universities. But anyway, let's go on and look in verse 3. It says, every month at its exit and entrance, it becomes changed and its periods are as the periods of the sun and when in like manner its light is to exist its light is a seventh portion from the light of the sun so here's just general information about the moon um, it's talking about its periods or its length day length or its rotational periods are the same as the sun's but its light is actually seven times dimmer but now let's look at verse 4, which is getting into the nitty gritty of the subject here. It says, Thus it rises, and at its commencement towards the east goes forth for 30 days. Talking about a lunation and how long the months are. We talk about that in the other video as well. It says, At that time it appears and becomes to you the beginning of the month. 30 days it is with the sun in the gate from which the sun goes forth. Now we learn all about these gates of course in the previous chapter. Chapter 71 in the Lawrence is where we learn about these 12 periods or these 12 gates. This is the verse where we learn when the first day of the year is. It says here that the first day of every year is when we get the new moon after the spring equinox but we'll come back to that what it's saying here in verse 5 is that the moon will be with the sun in each one of those gates 
but let's look at verse 6 it says half of it is an extent seven portions one half and the whole of its orb is void of light except a seventh portion out of the 14 portions of light and in a day it receives a seventh portion or half that portion of its light its light is by sevens by one portion and by the half portion it sets with the sun now the shot translation seems to be a little more clear so let me read it from there it says and the one half is prominent by the seventh part and her whole circumference is empty and there is no light with the exception of the one seventh part of the 14th part of light so now this is talking about the first day we remember up here in verse 4 it says at the time that it appears and becomes to you the beginning of the month so that's what it's talking about when it first appears the beginning of the month and what it says is that it receives one seventh portion of its light so here's something I've been working on that we can use to illustrate what Enoch is saying we're looking here at a blank moon. This would be what we would know as a 0% moon, the time before the moon appears. But if we step forward here, right after the dark moon, we have the appearance of the sliver of the moon. And that's the first key point to understanding that the new moon is not a full moon is because Enoch said when it appears. So we're going from a completely black moon to the appearance of a moon now if I were to fast forward to where we have a full moon then you have to ask yourself how does it make sense that you have the appearance of the moon you're going from a moon that's 95 percent complete to a moon that's 100 percent complete so when is the appearance I mean it was there yesterday and it'll be there tomorrow unlike the new moon which was actually invisible yesterday and did not exist at all so on the first day it receives one seventh portion of its light that verse right there proves that the full moon is not the new moon or the new moon is not a full moon because it's receiving one seventh portion of its light we come over here to timeanddate.com we see that there was a full moon on July the 3rd in the year 2023 but when we look at July 3rd we see that the moon is 99.7 percent illuminated so how is it receiving one seventh part of its light and then notice right here where it says that it sets with the Sun we're still talking about the beginning of the months we're still talking about the new moon and it says that the new moon when it commences when it appears it sets with the Sun so let's come back to timeanddate.com and we see that on July the 3rd which will be a full moon the moon will be setting at 5:42 a.m. but when we come back and look the Sun set on July the 3rd at 7 58 p.m. so the moon and the Sun are not setting on the full moon they're actually opposite one is rising while the other one is setting but when we look back we see that there was a new moon on June the 17th but we see that the set time is 7 55 p.m. and like we said the Sun set at 7 58 so the new moon is when they're setting together so here's yet a, another statement by Enoch that proves that the new moon is not the full moon. But it goes on in verse 7 that says, And when the sun rises, the moon rises with it. So on the next day you have the moon rising at 5.54 a.m. And the sun rising at 5.49. So they're rising together. That doesn't happen on a full moon but it goes on it says and that night when it commences its period previous to the day of the month the moon sets with the Sun again talking about how it's setting with the Sun during the new moon and on that night it is dark in the 14 portions that is in each half but it rises on that day with one seventh portion precisely and in its progress declines from the rising of the Sun during the remainder of its period in light, it increases to 14 portions. 
Now, this is a little bit more clear over in the Charles translation. It says, and she rises on that day with exactly a seventh part and comes forth and recedes from the rising of the sun. And in her remaining days, she becomes bright in the remaining 13 parts. And so what it's saying is that after the new moon, the moon is getting brighter. So we'll use this illustration to help us out. What he's saying is that on the 30th morning, there is no moon to be seen whatsoever. But on that morning, the sun and the moon will be rising together. And when they set that evening, you will see that the moon has received one portion of its light. And then for the remaining month, the moon will continue to receive increments of light until the 14th day when it is completely full and the 15th day when it starts to get smaller again. And the Lawrence translation again is saying the same thing. During the remainder of its period, its light increases to 14 parts. So he starts off talking about the new moon all the way until about 14 parts are completed. And then if you look down in the next chapter, Enoch has detailed the moon for 15 solid days writing down their appearance and everything else so we have all of the information we need to know that the new moon isn't full there is no appearance of a big old fat moon that was there yesterday and it has way more than one seventh portion of its light when it's completely full not to mention that that full moon is not rising nor setting with the sun the new moon isn't the full moon there's nothing full about a new moon. See, a lot of the problem comes in from Psalms 81 and 3, where it tells us to blow our trumpets on the new moon and the full moons. The King James Version says the time upon it, and people get confused thinking that that's telling us that the new moon is the full moon or the time appointed. They're actually different. The full moon is when our feast days are to take place. Just like we learn in the book of Sirach, chapter 43 and verse 7, uh, when it's talking about the time appointed, it's talking about the festival days. And in that book, what it says is that after those festivals, after the feast days, is when the light starts to decrease. That's because the Feast of Tabernacles, the Feast of Pentecost, and the Feast of Passover all fall in the middle of the month, around the 15th day of the month, when there is a full moon. And after those festivals, the light is decreasing back toward the new moon. But anyway, if you got anything out of this video, go ahead and hit the like button. If you didn't, hit the dislike button. But leave us a comment either way. And Shalom.